how to queue ranked. Now, I know what you're thinking, Luke, what is there to know about queuing ranked? So today I'm covering three rules for queuing ranked that if you follow and literally change nothing else about your gameplay will rank you up. So now that I have your attention, let's jump into it. By the way, I'm still looking for five more intermediate ranked players who want to get that GC or even SSL title in the next six weeks. If that's you, DM me with the keyword corner over on Discord, and we can talk details about coaching. Links down below, and as always, thanks for watching. Okay, so before we jump into the three rules, I just want to preface this with a bit of a conversation that I think is actually really important. So obviously, since Rocket League is a video game, when most people go into playing ranked, and this is me included, we don't actually give thought to how we queue. Like basically the thought process is, I'm playing Rocket League, I'm bored of free play, okay, time for ranked, right? <laughs> like that, that, that's most of us. But if we think about your actual skill for a second, what do you think is the difference between your best days and your worst days? Like actually in terms of performance, like how much better do you perform on your best day versus your worst day? When I ask most people this question, Usually people will say it's almost a full rank difference. So like a diamond two player can peak and beat champ twos, or they can play like trash and lose to a plat. Yet when we actually think about queuing ranked, we don't think about this. Rocket League is a game of consistency. So wouldn't it be nice if we could just always play like our peak rank? And that's gonna be the focus of these three principles that I'm about to jump into. Let's get started. Okay, rule number one. Don't queue if you know you're gonna play bad. I know, I know, it might sound stupid, but actually think about what I just said. Don't queue if you know you're gonna play bad. How many times have you booted up Rocket League, started warming up for five minutes, and you just know you're off? Like you're slow or your reaction time's bad, you're just missing all your mechanics in free play, and yet you quit your warm up and you go queue ranked. But it's one of the dumbest reasons people toss their rank. If you know you're gonna play bad, do not play ranked. Nobody's making you play ranked. We have the power of choosing when we queue. Before you get onto Rocket League, I want you to actually do like a 20 second self-assessment where you just ask yourself, am I in good condition to play? Am I super sleep deprived? Am I out of energy? Am I burnt from whatever the course of the day was? If the answer is yes to any of these, you can absolutely just turn a day where you're planning on playing ranked into just a training day. And better yet, what you can do is jump into your warmup, do your full warmup like you normally would. Even if you're not feeling great, jump in, do your warmup, and then ask yourself, was it just nerves? Was it just jitters? Or am I still genuinely not on track to play good today? If you do your normal warmup routine and you realize I'm probably gonna toss games if I jump into ranked right now, seriously, just don't queue ranked. It sounds stupid, that's rule number one. If you're not feeling up for it, use the day to train and jump back in the next day when you're fresh. Rule number two, stop queuing when you reach autopilot. Now intuitively, you probably know what I'm talking about when I say autopilot, but after a certain amount of games, and this is different for everybody, we all reach a certain point where we just can't maintain focus. Either you need a break or you need to just sign off for the day. But I think we can all agree that at some point we start to lose focus in ranked. Now to put this into perspective, I found that when I play ranked, my capacity for actually maintaining focus, like if I'm in intense ranked series, is I can usually play at my best for four, maybe five games at maximum seriously like five games max and like in the sixth and seventh i am absolutely starting to make worse decisions and i'm just not as sharp in game now bringing the conversation back to you my prompt is i want you and be honest with yourself as you think about this what is your capacity for focusing in ranked now first your ego is going to jump out and you're going to be like i could play 10 11 12 i, I could play two best of sevens and still be focused. But after your ego settles down and you sort of have some time to reflect, think about the last ranked session you had. What game were you performing best in? Was it your third? Was it your fourth? Was it your fifth? Maybe you can last longer than me. I, you know, I'm not gonna make a judgment call based on your rank play. But what I will say is most people, 80, 90% of people don't stop queuing until after they should have. Think about that for a second. Would you say most times you sign off when you're on a winning streak? Or on a losing streak. When I ask most people, it's usually only after they've lost two or three games and then they try to end on a win, do they finally sign off. Imagine if we could take all your rank sessions from the past month 
and just cut off the two or three losses that come on the end. How much would that change your rank? A full rank? A rank and a half? This is what I really mean when I start to get into ranked queuing rules, because I think so many people just need to hear this and actually sit with it. Like, think to yourself about the mistakes you may have made when queuing ranked, and you'll start to realize, wow, if I just let my ego go and actually put down the controller when I should have, maybe I could be the next rank. Maybe I could be two ranks above what I should be. This is genuinely really important. That's gonna be rule two. And finally, rule number three, no tilt queuing. This is the most self-explanatory, and so I won't spend too much time on it. But just like with the second rule, tilt queuing is one of those things where if you let your ego get in the way, you will only stab yourself in the foot. The problem with tilt queuing is not that we become necessarily worse when we tilt. It's actually a little bit more nuanced than that. When we tilt, we revert back to our habits. And for some people, believe it or not, your habits can be better than how you play when you're thinking. Like if you're really trying to focus on learning and improve, you can make worse short-term decisions. Sometimes it's good to just shut off your brain and go. But in most cases, and especially over the long term, when you tilt queue, you revert down to those habits. And most people's habits are bad ones. So when you tilt queue, not only are you not really learning new information and you're kind of stabbing your future self in the foot, you're also wasting all the information that you learned over the course of the past months. Because the moment you tilt is the moment you just revert back to whatever habits you had. And that is like the easiest way to stay exactly static at your rank. So the minute you notice that you're starting to get frustrated with your teammates or the opponents, or you just think something or say something in your head that assigns blame elsewhere, that's the moment when you have to nip it in the bud. Remember, it's much easier to stop a tilt cue before it happens than once you're already over the edge and tanking all of your MMR. So the minute you start to notice that thought process or that thought loop that's just negative, separate yourself. Take a break and see if you can return or just call it. Seriously, if you can control your own ego, your MMR will go up. I promise. All right, so to recap, those are my three rules for queuing ranked. Number one, don't queue if you know you're going to lose. You have to listen to your body before you queue a session. Number two, don't queue on autopilot. Be honest with yourself and think about what's my actual capacity for queuing ranked. And before you go in, set a number. The worst thing to do is to queue into ranked and to not have even an idea of how long you want to play because that's when you get into the tilt queue stages. And then number three, of course, don't tilt queue. Stopping sooner is almost always better than stopping later. So please, please, please don't stab your future self in the foot by tilt queuing. Okay, those are the ranked lessons I wish I had listened to when I was climbing and I wish I'd still listen to better, truthfully, that will actually change your rank without you having to do anything. Hopefully that was helpful. Please, please, please keep this stuff in mind and hold your team accountable to this as well because it's gonna be so crucial for making sure you stay on the win streak and you're not gaining and losing those same three games over and over again. Thanks for watching. Good luck in your rank games. I'm sure with all this information, you're gonna crush it. Peace, guys.